This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to everyone, whether you by conference call, whether you by YouTube or Facebook. We say this is a blessed day of the Lord. And we pray right now that God is shining his favor upon each and every one of us that we might be able to receive and partake of his goodness this day. Now let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this great opportunity to come before you and your people. Lord, to share in your word. We thank you for this day, for you have uh, made this day and you have allowed us to be a part of it, for it is you, O God, is gives, who gives us the reason that we live, we move, and we have our being. So, Lord, we pray that as we come before you this morning with our cups lifted up, O God, that you will fill them, allow them to overflow. Speak to our hearts, O God. Allow us to receive of your word. We give you praise. We give you glory. In advance, in Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. The book of Hosea is where we are today. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. That's where we are. I want everyone uh, that haven't gotten there yet take the opportunity to find the book of Hosea and, it, and go with me to chapter 6 of Hosea. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 3 would be for our subject text. And it says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth, is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. I want to share this morning from the subject. Get get up, get up and live. That's what I want to talk about. Get up and live. You know, it's 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 interesting to see. As all that we have encountered these past uh, few months, um, this year, matter of fact, in this year of 2020, yeah, I have seen so many of us, so many people um, basically give up, won't get up, won't live, as if, as if our life, our life is based upon circumstances and situations but our life is based on he who gives us life or he who causes us to live. I, I tell you, in Acts, it tells us, you know, Paul said that we are the reason, God is the reason that we live, we move, and we have our being. And so when we look at the book of Hosea, the book of Hosea is a picture uh, or it depicts the relationship that God has with his people Israel. And and when we start to look into this book of Hosea and looking at this, when this book first began, when the chapter, uh, when the book first began, the Bible declares that God spoke to Hosea and told him to go and take a wife of holotry and children of holotry. And what this 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 picture, the first thing it does, it pictures uh, a falling people. It, that, that, and uh, as a picture of a falling people, we look around us today and we see a fallen nation. We, it, it, America, is, is, we say it's been founded on God, but yet it's full of people falling. And Israel is... Is a picture. Uh, Israel at this point with Goma, uh, as as Hosea took Goma to be Goma to be his wife of holotry. Children were born to her. The first son was Jezreel, which means God will scatter. The second was a daughter, 
which is named Lo Rua Ruma, which Lo the prefix Lo meaning no or not, and Rua meaning mercy, meaning that God uh, will have no mercy. Um, and then so the third was Lo Emma, meaning not my people. And Israel, um, Goma is a picture of Israel, how God would had a a love for Israel, even though Israel is a falling nation, but God loved it. So Goma, being the wife of Hosea, now uh, having these children out of holotry, uh, Jezreel, Loruma, uh, Loami, and in chapter two he says to the children, Ami, which meaning mercy. And and uh, Ammon, which meaning people, and Ruma, which meaning mercy, was to bring charges against their mother, Israel, because Israel was playing a holic. Because Israel, you got to remember, uh, before Israel became a people, they were out of the uh, era of Chaldeans when God called Abraham and told him he would bless him and make him a great nation. His stars, if he can go out and count the stars, so uh, shall his descendants be. And yet he blessed them to become a nation. And as Abraham led them, Isaac and Jacob, they began to flourish and they began to prosper as they were uh, on their way to the land of promise. Now, Joshua, or Joseph rather, Joseph being born to Jacob, uh, when God raised him up to, to, to be able to lead the people in bondage, when they was in bondage in Egypt. Well, Egypt, well, I, I take that back, let me back up. Joshua, who, who when he died, who had favor with the Pharaoh in Egypt, when he died, the next favor did not know Joseph, and they put them in bondage. But when God raised up a deliverer named Moses and brought them out of bondage, and as they came out of bondage, Moses couldn't take them into the land of promise, but there was Joshua who would lead them into the land of promise. But when he led them, the Bible lets us know that the people of Israel who was married to God, they would continue to seek after other gods. The nation would turn their back on God and they would follow after strange God, do these strange things. And when you read the book of Hosea, you'll find that God, Israel did just that. They went and they sought after the Baal. They sought after strange God and they sought after the things of the world. And that was a picture of Goma. Goma was the picture of that, how Hosea married her and God, she just kept going after um, strange lovers. She was going after strange gods. She was following after the world. But it says us today, God brought us out. God delivered us. He made a way for us. Now, the study of Hosea is a lot in more in depth than I'm just trying to touch on. It's just to give us an idea. But we, God had brought us out. He delivered us out of the bondage of the world and sin. And, but yet, somehow or another, in that fallen nature that's in us, uh, been as fallen people, and God uh, wants us to be with him and he's with us. But we have this tendency to continue to run after strange gods, run after the things of the world, seek after other love. You know, we become more lovers of pleasure and men than we are of God. And not realizing that God is the one who brought us out. God is the one when we was in a world of sin, he made a way for us. But we have this fallen nature in us. Israel was a fallen people. And and so, but God, just, just like in chapter 2, in chapter 2 and verse 14, after God said he was going to put a, he was going to block them, he was going to um, put a hedge up, he was going to put thorns up, he was going to make sure that, uh, Israel would not be able to follow after the, the, her strange gods, her strange lovers. Well, he cut 
them off and cut them off in every direction because they did not realize that even what they were offering to Baal, God was the provider of it. Even that which what we are here running around in the world and trying to grab all of the world, God is the one that provides for us. He gives us everything that we have, and we are here offering it to strange gods. We are here doing some crazy stuff with the blessings that God has. Uh, given it, but God didn't cut them off, right? God did not destroy them. And they did go into the Assyrian captivity in 722 BC. But one thing for certain is, God says He would not, uh, uh, He was not going to show them mercy. And they were not going to be his people. But in chapter 2, verse 14, he said, Therefore, behold, I will allure them. I will allure her. I will bring her into the wilderness, and I will speak comfortably unto her. And, you know, that's what God does to us a lot of times. He take and he come and he speaks constantly to us. We know we messed up, and we know that there's no hope for us, but we can hear the voice of God saying to us, I will bless you. I will make a way for you. In verse 15 of chapter 2, he said, I will give her vineyard from thence and the valley of Acre for a door of hope. And the valley of Acre is what's known as the valley of trouble. It is where the sin of Achan was uncovered and he was judged and his family were judged and punished and put away there. But he says, listen, I will make a door of hope. When it seems like there is no hope, being a falling people and monks falling people, God says he will give us a door of hope. And then when we look around there and it seems like, man, there is no hope. But let me tell you something. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. In verse 16 of chapter 2, he said, In that day, saith the Lord, thou shalt call me Isha, meaning my husband, my man. And that gives an uh, intimacy and affection. And he said, and shalt call me no more Bella, uh, be, uh, Bella which means master or shows rulership. In verse 23 of chapter 2, he said, I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will scatter unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon uh, her that had not attained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. So here it pictures Israel as a falling people. It pictures Goma as one who fall away from her husband, Hosea, and go out here into this holly tree and begin to give birth to children, a holly tree. But God says in chapter 3, how it shows us the picture of a fallen people, but God did not forget about Goma, I didn't want Hosea to forget about Goma, and God did not forget about Israel. In chapter 3, he says to Hosea, Go, yet love a woman beloved of a friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of uh, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley and said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so I, so will I also be for thee. Listen, here is a fallen people, but God did not forget about them. And he did not want Hosea to forget about Gomer. He said, go get her. Go get her. And, 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 and that is so good to let us know that God does not forget about us. Even though we fall, even though we mess up, God does not forget about us. And it seemed like when they, there was no mercy, he brings us mercy. When it seemed like that we were not his people, he said, you are my people. Now, here's the thing, though, as a picture of fallen people, the problem is a faithless people. That's the problem. The problem is a faithless people. You know, all of us in our humanity, 
in our sinfulness and our flesh, we have fallen and many have fallen away from God. Even God bring them out of bondage, but somehow or another in that fallen nature, we have the tendency to go back out here and seek out the, the things of the world and we become lovers of the world and they are. But God still yet shows us mercy and God still yet call us his people. But here's the problem. The problem is faithless people. In chapter 4 and verse 1 and following, he said, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord have a charge against you, a controversy with, uh, with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. You know, this, this nation here, America, just like Israel, you know, they, they, they is no, there is no truth. People are not looking for truth. People are not searching after truth. People are running to and fro trying to do what is pleasing in their own sight. They are, they are pushing God out on every hand. There is no knowledge. When you turn them, people are looking for answers. They are turning to man. They're turning to soothsayers. They're turning to people who tick their ears. But listen. The scripture, Paul said, let God be true and every man a lie. And you know, people are killing, people are stealing, people are committing adultery, people are shedding blood, you know. But here's what the Lord said in this chapter 4 and verse 5. He said, therefore shalt thou fall in a day, the prophets also shall fall in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people and they set their heart on their iniquity. Listen, the more that the preachers or the prophets was increasing, the more they were sin against God. You know, and, and the, not only the preachers, but the people, the more that we seem to be increasing in the things of this land, the things of this world, the more that we reject the knowledge of God. And the Bible tells us in verse 9, and there shall be like people, like priests. The priests are, were not to be like people. The, pe the priests were to be like God. Pastors, preachers, we are to be like God. We're not to be like the people. We have people now influencing preachers to preach what they want to hear, do what they want to be done, rather than the preachers are listening and following after the voice of God. And therefore, the problem is a faithless people because the problem is faithless preachers. God calls us to be faithful preachers that we might proclaim the unadulterated word of God that would change the doings and the goings of people. But when the priests become like people and people become like the world and like Goma, who was running back and forth, chasing after the lovers of the world, and the priests, the preachers, began to seek after the things of this world, Rather than the things that is of God, we represent the falling people and a faithless people, a faithless people. And the Bible declares unto us in four and verse chapter four and verse ten: For they shall eat and shall not have enough; they shall commit harlotry, whoredom, 
and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. We're going to keep, they're going to keep seeking nothing and they're never going to get enough. And only the Lord can provide that which we need to help us to get enough, to have sufficiency in everything we need. But that's the problem. The problem is faithless people because the problem is faithless preachers. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling me, I'm telling all of us, we must stand on the word of God. And even if the people of God want to run to and fro and chase us through the world system, we as preachers of God, we cannot become faithless people. We cannot become faithless preachers. And people, we cannot be faithless people because if we do, we are going to be falling people. But I'm going to tell you, it was God who called our fallen soul. Even now, when we are exercising no faith, it is God who's still holding on to us by his mercy and his grace. But as I close, though a picture of faith, uh, a fallen people, and the problem is faithless people, there is a procedure of a faithful people. There's a procedure of a faithful people. Because, see, in chapter 4 and through chapter 5, it gives us the, the problem that comes through the picture of a fallen people, and that is faithless people. And verse 4 says, they when, uh, chapter 5 says, and they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of holotry is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. The pride of Israel do testify to his faith. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity, and Judah also shall fall with them. They shall go with their flocks, with their herds, to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn from him. A faithless people will not find the Lord and his blessings. See, all that come to Jesus must come to him by faith. And he will, Hebrews 11, 6 said, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. And the word tells us a faithless people is fallen people. Is fallen people. But the procedure for a faithful people, it gives us to know at, at, very, at very 14, verse 14 and verse 15 of chapter 5. It says, For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. And I, I even I, will tear and go away, will tear away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Something that said in Psalm 119, 60, say, if, I, if it hadn't been for affliction, I would have went astray. Second Chronicles 7 Ezra said that when my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek his faith and turn from my wicked ways. See, we got to seek the face of God. Too many trying to seek the hand of God and not his face, not his presence. But the Lord said, I will go away. He will not show us. It seems as if, if he have taken his hands off us, he had gotten far away from us, and allow us to find ourselves in the midst of doom and despair till we come to our senses and acknowledge our sins that is ever present before the face of Almighty God until we will seek after his face and turn away from our sins. And the Bible says, when we go through, he said, we will seek him early. So the procedure 
of a faithful people is found right here in chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. The picture of a fallen people is the problem of a faithless, faithless people, but there is a procedure for us to become faithful people. What is it? Verse 1 says, come, I told you last week, come, children, old age, middle age, everyone. He said the first thing we have to do is return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. See, when we return unto the Lord, we went astray, we, we messed up, we come short of the glory of God. He said, but he says to us, come now. Let us reason together. Return unto the Lord. If the Lord have torn us, my brothers and sisters, if he have hurt us, he's able to heal us. The Lord will hurt us, but yet, my friend, he will heal us. He will smite us, but yet he will bind us up. He will chasten us because whom the Lord thy God loveth is whom he chastened. And he says here for us to return. So the first thing that we have to do, brothers and sisters, in the procedure to become faithful people is turn, return to God. Turn away from this world system. Turn away from chasing after the things of the world and return to God. You remember the prodigal son when he came to his senses in Luke 15. He said he realized what he had done. He realized what he do, And he returned back to his father. And said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I'm no more worthy to become, uh, you be your child. Make me a hired servant. But he returned. And that's what we got to do. We got to return. You want to, if we want to see America be great again, we must return unto the Lord. When we don't have leaders, when we don't have people in high positions who are focused on the Lord, but we as believers in Christ Jesus know that we got to return to the Lord. When God's people return to the Lord, I believe God will, second thing is, revive us. He will revive us. Notice in verse 2, he said, after two days will he revive us. You know, you can't revive something that ain't never been alive in the first place. And so many people are trying to revive something or someone that's dead who ain't never been alive. That's what revival is all about. Revival is to put new wind in us, put new breath in us. And that old breath, that old stuff that have called us to fall from the wayside, who have called us to be faithless people, we need to return back to the first love, our first love, God of our salvation, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And let him revive us by his spirit as he breathed in us new breath that we might be and do what he called us to do. We can get up and live if we return to God. We can get up and live if we allow him to revive us. That's what he did in Ezekiel chapter 37 in the midst of the valley of dry bone. He told Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind. And the wind come from the four corners and came into the dead body and brought life. When we allow God to revive, he'll bring us life. And it will cause us to not sit there in despair and die by the wayside, but it will cause us to get up and live. Get up and live. But not only that, the third thing when we get up and live, not only must we return and be revived, but we can then be raised. Notice chapter two in the B part. He said, in the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. That's exciting to me because him that God has raised, it is him who ought to give God praise. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you're dead, 
because you was far out there, when you return and God revive you, he ain't going to leave you in dead stuff. He ain't going to leave you doing dead things. No, what he's going to do, he's going to raise us out. He's going to raise us up and bring us out of it. And all I'm trying to ask you today is, my brother and sister, are you living today for God? Are we trusting God? Have we learned to get up and live for God? Return to God. Let God revive you. Let him breathe new breath in you. That old way of doing things is gone. The old system is dead. It's gone. Now he's reviving us. And he's also raising us. Get up out of the mark and mire. Get up out of the doom and despair, the pit of despair, and allow God to raise you up. Just like with Peter and John going into the uh, uh, the, uh, the temple to pray, this lame man laid there at the gate called Beautiful. And when they look, when he looked for silver, looked for arms, they said, silver and gold have enough, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they reached out and took the man by his right hand. The Bible says they lifted him up. And when they lifted him up, the man began to get strength in his legs, his ankle bone. And he went running and leaping and praising God. Listen, if God raised us up, my brothers and sisters, and causes us to be revived because we return to him. Let's give God the praise. Let's magnify God. Let's bless his name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, as David said. And let us exalt his name together. God will raise us up. He said he will raise us up. But then as I close, when we get up and live, not only will we return to our Lord, and our Lord will revive us. And our Lord will raise us. But the last thing, my brother, in this procedure of a faithful people, God will reign on us. He will reign on us. And I'm so glad uh, uh, in verse 3, he said, Then shall we know if or when we follow on to know the Lord, and we follow on to know not only the Lord, but his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. You know, Bishop Paul Martin made that song, said, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. And I don't know about y'all, but I love the fact that God is raining on us. And he causes us to know that we can get up and live when we return. And he now revives and he raises. And he just didn't raise us up to bring us or to destroy us. But you know what? He allowed rain to fall on us. And I'm so glad to know that he's still raining on us. Just like the farmer, the Bible, the, 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 in history, the farmer would look for uh, the former rain, the early rains to come so they can prepare the ground and get the seeds in the ground. But then also they look for latter rains to come. So it will cause their crops to grow and will cause their fruit to mature and ripen. And see, that's what God does for us when he raises us up. He continue to rain on us as we continue to grow and to mature. Listen, let me tell you something about that rain. One, first thing is, the rain saturates. You know, uh, I, I look at now, my grass, when I go outside, where a couple of weeks ago, uh, I go outside, my, I had brown spots all in my yard. Uh, even though I got an irrigation system, it does not, I can't run it long enough without draining my pump in order to get the grass to go back green. So I was praying for rain, praying for rain. Seemed like everybody was getting rain except us. But then here come a shower and the ground is so dry and so hard that a little shower didn't do what it needed. Oh, but in the last couple of days, the Lord opened the floodgates of heaven and he allowed rain to fall. 
and the rain, it wasn't a hard downpour, but it was a saturating rain. See, the rain was saturated, and when we hardened, the ground was hardened, that slow rain began to come. It began to seep down into the ground. The ground began to absorb it. See, when it comes too hard and too fast, it just, and the ground is hard, it just run on out somewhere. But when it comes slow, it gives the soil the time to uh, absorb it. It saturates it. And that's what the word of God, when we, the Bible says, Jesus said in John 8, 31, he said, when we, we, when we continue in his word, then we are his disciples indeed. And verse 32 said, and we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. See, when we allow the word of God to saturate us, get down inside of, but guess what? We got to follow after the word of God. And we got to seek to know God's doing, not man's doing, not the world's doing, but God's doing. We seek and trying to find out what's going on in social media, seeking to find out what's going on in, in, in the news today, what's going on in the world, but what's going on in the word of God. And God's word will come in and permeate us and saturate us. But not only will rain saturate us, but rain will strengthen us. Just like it fall on those crops and causes them, them, them seeds to grow. And as it growing, you don't see it withering up because that rain is causing it to get stronger. And that's what the word of God would do with it. And when we saturate it with it, it will cause us to become stronger. Uh, I wish I had a witness. You, you know, good and well, the more that you study the word of God and the more that the word of God becomes part of your life, and the more the word of God become reality in our life, the stronger we become. Because we begin to be faithful people where we were faithless people and we doubted everything. We did not know. But now as faithful people, but that word of God speaks to our life and it saturated and calls us where we were weak and worn and torn. It causes us now to be strong. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. But then not only that, not only does that rain saturate and that rain strengthen, oh, but the rain supplies. When that harvest, when they look for that latter rain, and that harvest is right there. The Bible lets us know that the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. But as we pray for God to send laborers into his vineyard to bring in the harvest, because as we look on the field, the field is ripe, ready for a harvest. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, God will supply us with everything we need through the word of God that will cause us to be stronger. You know, Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I'm so glad to let us know today. David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. All I want to know today, are your needs being supplied? Because Paul said, God will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. Are you stronger today than what you were when you were a fallen people and a faithless people? Because now you are a faithful people. Are we being saturated with the word of God? Every day of our lives, seeking to absorb all that God is giving us because he's steady reigning on us. Well, let me tell you, my brother and sister, unless we return to the Lord, we can't be revived. Unless we are revived, we can't be raised. And unless we raise, God is not going to rain his blessings upon us. So it's up to you today. Will you get up and live or will you sit there and wither away? Mm. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word and we pray today, God, that it will speak to all of our hearts. Though we were fallen people, though we were faithless people, but now we know what the procedure we must take to be faithful people. Return unto you, O Lord, 
Let you revive us. Let you raise us and reign on us. That we seek to follow, to know you, God, in a very personal way. And that we might know your doings. That we might know your goings. And we, God, would be the people you would have us to be. Bless now as only you can. Someone out there may not know you in the part in their sin. We pray that they open their hearts and receive you as their Lord and as their Savior. And teach us, oh God, that we do not have to go back out there into the world and live as a harlot or a whoredom trying to mix the world with the word. Use us, God, to bring glory to thy name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Love you all.